welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Ella Easton. Um, I guess to start things off, uh, can you take me through your just kind of past few weeks and how this COVID-19 quarantine situation um, escalated and snowballed for you? Um, so I think it's been about a month since I have been home. Um, I swear, like, time is a vortex and I don't know like what day it is or <laughs> how long I've been anywhere or anything. Um, but the day that the shelter in place was enacted in Northern California, I got a message from Greg, um, my coach, Greg Meehan. And he said, I'm sure you've seen, you know, the news, um, looks like, you know, things are really going to start closing down here. Um, he sent us a message and was like, this isn't about swimming anymore. You guys need to stay safe, go home, be with your family, take care of yourself. Um, and we'll worry about the training later. Cause at this point, that's not the priority. And so I, um, actually woke up to those messages after I took a short nap and, um, I called my mom. I told her I'm coming home. I packed up everything that I could, you know, <laughs> grab in an hour and drove back to Southern California um, with the intention that I wasn't going back because um, I didn't know how long that I was going to be here. Mm -hmm. And so that has, you know, caused me to be wearing the same outfits every week and having, <laughs> having minimal um, amounts of my personal items. But um, that's also been nice, just um, being in a different space. Um, and learning, learning to live with less and um, take advantage of the important things like the time with my family. And, um, but I, I really can't believe that it's already been four weeks and it took me a little while to um, get comfortable with the whole idea. I think at first it was, there was so much stress around trying to make sure that I was, you know, staying in shape and, um, getting some sort of training time in, whether that was like in or out of a pool. Um, I haven't been in the water now since that time. Um, and I, it's been a long time since I've taken a break um, this long um, since I had mono. And even when I had mono, I was still, you know, in the water um, because of the timing uh, of that. But um I have like slowly gotten into a routine. Um, the Olympic postponement happened not too far after, or not too long after I got home, which that week itself felt like the longest week of my life. Um, being home, sort of being paralyzed, not knowing what to do with the situation, not knowing what was gonna happen moving forward. Um, I personally had a really, really rough start to this year dealing with some health stuff and had to take significant time off. And um, knowing that I was now gonna be in a situation where training wasn't gonna be an option, whether I was healthy enough to train or not, um, that was extremely stressful and so, every single day I was waiting on some sort of like information about an opportunity that was going to allow me to get in a pool for 20 minutes or um, like more info from the USOC and the IOC um, indicating whether I needed to be like high stress on guard ready to compete at any moment. <laughs> um, yeah. And I never would have wished for um, a global pandemic to, you know, bring about all of this, but I'm really glad that the IOC made the decision to like, to postpone the Olympics in the best interests of the health of the whole world. Um, so it's just, it's been interesting trying to balance a bunch of different information coming at me from many different angles. And um, I think that if this had happened to me, a couple of years ago, uh, it would have looked really different in terms of me being able to handle something um, like this emotionally and um, I guess mentally in terms of how I have been approaching my career and my trajectory um, in terms of my 
career outside of swimming. Um, but I think that I've, I've dealt with a couple of things in the last couple of years that have given me pretty good perspective on, um, on what's important. And I get to spend time with my parents that I haven't been able to spend since I've been to college. And I appreciate home cooked meals. I appreciate, um, spending time with my family. And we've had, we've had virtual zoom calls with 20 of my family members, um, every Saturday and have a little happy hour and a get together to see each other. And when things are like crazy busy and the routine is normal, we often don't take the time to, to do those things unless it's, you know, scheduled reunions months in advance and being able to quickly connect with people and have a little bit more communication back and forth has been awesome. Yeah. So, so how do you feel like, you know, present day right now, how do you feel like you have handled this situation? Um, maybe some of that perspective you had mentioned. Yeah, I, it, my emotion surrounding everything comes and goes in waves. Um, I think that at first it was terribly difficult because there were so many question marks. I didn't know whether I was supposed to be prepared to swim, you know, the fastest I ever had this summer, um, or if that was going to happen a year later. And I think that for me, I'm my most confident and steadfast self when I have um, a little bit of a plan that I can stick to. And I think that once I knew that I had a little bit more time um, and I also thought about the fact that everybody's in the same situation, I just kept telling myself like, you need to make the most of the time that you have been given. Um, and that means healing from everything that I was dealing with previously. That means giving my body a time um, to recover, sleeping more, something that I have always struggled with, but um, have, you know, grown to appreciate the value of sleep. Um, and using, using this time to fill my my, you know, energy reserves for, for when I get back to it. Um, and I think because I've graduated from college and I've been out of that routine a little bit, I have learned um, some ways to pass the time um and enjoy it and i used to i I would definitely still have this in me but not to the same extent with feeling the like dying need to fill every moment of the day with something productive um and i have learned very quickly that you you run out of fuel and you run out of steam trying to do that um, I feel like an old lady now, but I, I love my time to sit in the morning and drink my coffee and, um, spend a couple hours, you know, enjoying the sunlight through my window or even like taking a really long walk, which I never took the time to do before. Um, but has given me a lot of time to think and be grateful for the fact that I'm healthy, um, and be grateful that the rest of my family is healthy. My dad um, actually had a COVID scare. Um, we, he tested negative, but we actually think that there was a chance that he, um, he had it. The tests aren't perfect. Um, and he was very, very sick. And that was also pretty stressful the first couple weeks of me being home. And now he's still recovering from, from all of that. And um, my mom and dad live separate. And so I haven't actually seen him, which has been one of the saddest things because I am not usually in Southern California and I don't get to see my parents super, super often. Um, but I have been just a couple miles away and he's been locked up by himself. And so um, I'm really excited for the day that like we're able to see each other and not 
uh, be worried about, you know, sharing whatever sickness is going around. Um, so I think that I have truly just tried to enjoy the time and absorb all of the energy that I'm able to um, stock up during this time because I'm I'm truly never going to get that again, especially in the middle of, of my swimming career. Yeah, I think I think it's very cool that you mentioned, you know, being able to sit and appreciate time, I think as swimmers, you know, you wake up, do do a one to two hour workout in the morning, go to school, another workout in the evening, homework, eat, you know, try to find time to sleep. Um, you know, swimmers aren't really accustomed to sitting still. And I actually just talked to Madison Cox recently about, um, you know, she's been trying to meditate daily. And it, it, with that, just means like three minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes of like sitting still. Uh, that's a really, really hard thing to do. Um, you know, and I think it's, I think it's super cool that you have, you have found that time to, to be able to be still in, a, especially in all of this kind of scariness. Yeah. And I think in sitting still and, um, Another thing that I've tried to do is through certain parts of the day, not beyond my technology. Um, I think it's super easy to get overloaded with news, but then also be on technology for the sake of um, avoiding um, the situation. And I think that I've tried to allow myself to recognize my thoughts and not be judgmental about um, the stress that I'm having or um, the huge questions that still, you know, give me a little bit of anxiety. Um, but we've had some national team, um, mindfulness, um, sessions with Sean McCann and he has run us through some, you know, exercises to practice sitting and, you know, noticing what you're thinking, trying to be still and focusing on your breath. And um, I think doing that truly just for a couple of minutes every single day is a great reset. And I think that for me, like doing that in the afternoon um, is always helpful because I have a lull. I feel really motivated in the morning when I get up and I, you know, do a little yoga and then I make my breakfast and I sit and do some work on my computer. Um, and then I'll be like I have so many hours left of my day and I'm stressed about thinking about all the things that I potentially could do to you know check the product productive box um mm -hmm. when I do lay down at night but um having a little reset and slowing down and just you know being present for for that moment is something that I hope I can continue to do when all of this is over and the the craziness of real life slowly returns yeah, I think <laughs> I 100% relate to being overwhelmed by trying to check the productivity box. I think <laughs> when you're given so much unstructured time and you're used to being you're used to being on structured time and being productive with that time, you're like, "Well, I have to achieve the same level of productivity, right?" <laughs> and there's so many ways to do it. Um, it, and it's hard to pick and choose and, um, yeah, that, that can be a very nice reset and also help the decision-making process a little bit, I have found. Yeah, absolutely. And when I was struggling with some things in, in January and February, there was the time that I had to take off. It was like, I, I had a really hard time recognizing that during that time, that's what I needed to be doing, but I had never considered the rest and recovery as productive um and allowing myself to feel that way has also helped shift my perspective and knowing that i am allowing myself to heal and recover and um do the things that I didn't normally have the time to do like sit and allow my body to, you know, restore itself. Um, and I think that 
people may be stressed about getting out of shape, um, maybe stressed about, you know, not, not staying in cardiovascular shape or whatever it may be. Um, and I think that people aren't giving like the human body enough credit for its resilience and being able to come back potentially much stronger from this than, um, than they expect. And I think that doing things that feel good for your body, but aren't damaging, um, is really important during this time. Like continue to do the body weight exercises and get your heart rate up and get some sweat going. Um, but not being stressed about, you know, trying to stay in the exact type of routine that you had before, because it's, it's just impossible. Um, and, you know, being very conscious about like the energy that you're spending now and making sure that when we do have the opportunity to get back in, into the real world, that you're ready to do so. And you're not tired from all of this other activity that you've forced yourself to do, um, while you've been in captivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. What have you found, <clears throat> you know, besides maybe the sitting, um, have you found other activities maybe not related to physical fitness that you've, that you've picked up and enjoyed? Yeah. So I have been doing a lot of cooking and baking mm. and, so this past year was the first year that I lived um, in a house, like with roommates, with my own kitchen. At Stanford, we're so lucky that we have housing and um, food provided to us while we're there all four years. And so this was my first year to practice real adulthood. Yeah. And I really enjoyed cooking for myself and becoming comfortable in the kitchen and now we have to make food at home um, for the most part. We, my mom and I go out to different local restaurants and try to order out and try to support our local businesses because we want to see them continue to stay there um, through this crisis. And so that's been one priority, but, but going to the grocery store and getting what's available and getting creative with meals to make, um, trying baking recipes. Um, I on Easter, or I guess the day before Easter, I did, you know, five hours of, of baking and a couple hours of decorating. And uh -huh. I <laughs> delivered cupcakes and other treats to some of my neighbors and family and friends. Um, it was therapeutic to go through the, you know, decoration process of all of that. And yeah. um, it was doing something for others too, which, which felt nice. And I got to spend time sitting, thinking about what I wanted it to look like and um, going through and, you know, frosting each cupcake very meticulously um, and, you know, filtering some of my, my creative and um, productive energy into that um, has mm -hmm. been fun. And so I, I plan on doing that again, but my mom and I are also like, we can't get in the habit of baking way too much because if we keep it in the house, it'll just get eaten and we're not doing enough <laughs> exercise to, <laughs> um, to justify that all the time. So it was fun to like make it, give it away and then enjoy, you know, the other part, part at home. Um, and also I, my friends know I'm pretty bad at texting and really have to set a time to aside to have a conversation and call and FaceTime. And so this has been a really good opportunity for me to um, connect with, with more people again, um, more frequently. Cause I think that it's been, it's been nice, but it's also been challenging. I think we, we go through our, our daily life, interacting with a lot of different people and we often don't have to make the effort to talk to some people or do that um you know weekly catch up because you see them on a daily or weekly or monthly basis based on your routine and now you in order to still interact with them at, on the same level you have to um put in a little bit more effort um and and make those connections which has been great for me because i really, really have appreciated, you know, connecting with my friends in the swimming world and my friends outside of the swimming world and um, my family and all of the people that 
are busy along with me being busy normally where we give each other grace when we don't check in for quite a long time. But this period has been great to take the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Nice. Uh, that, that sounds great. Um, so I guess on maybe a closing note or s- certainly moving forward through this, um, how do you see yourself, you know, moving, moving towards a little more normalcy, um, as we go through this? Yeah. So I quickly realized that I needed, um, a sense of normalcy through this, even if that meant creating a routine that is completely different from what my normal life looks like. Um, but getting into some habits and putting in some structured time that I know is going to be there every day or every week or whatever it may be, um, in order to feel a sense of structure and routine. Um, and because my life is normally like that, even though the, the content of my daily life is different, the fact that I can sit down and think about what I want to be doing from, you know, 8am to 10am and then, you know, through the late morning and then early afternoon and setting aside time to do things and really sticking to it. Um, I've gotten into a routine and I think that as things start to open up, that will slowly change. Some things I think are going to stay the same. Um, but working out is going to look different in terms of where I'm able to do that and what I'm able to do. Um, but I think that for right now, I'm trying to tell myself that this is my life and this is, um, what the plan is. And until further notice, um, this is what I'm going to continue doing. And I think that that has helped me settle a lot. Um, knowing that I have a structure that I have set for myself and that I enjoy and I feel like makes me feel good every single day and gives me things to look forward to. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to hold on tight to that while I can. Um, knowing that when opportunities do open up, I'm going to be so excited to take the chance to do something that, um, I haven't in a while like swim. (laughs) Um, so I'm very, very looking forward to that. And I, I am really hopeful that this period has allowed me the time and space to fall in love with the sport again, because I'll be so excited to be reunited with the water when I do get the opportunity. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, Ella. Absolutely. It was good to see you. I hope you're hanging in there too. Have you Thank picked you. up any new hobbies? Um, well, so we just discovered that, uh, so I've been staying at my girlfriend's place and um, she lives in a pretty nice neighborhood. She lives in like a garage apartment. And so we discovered that they have like a, a neighborhood tennis and basketball court. Oh, nice. And so that's that's been good uh yeah. we've we've been doing that and that's you know like that's something that you can kind of pick one or two things to focus on and kind of get better at because it's like I'm not good at basketball or tennis but like you can see yourself improve if you do it more yeah. and that's that's good um so that's been yeah. fun yeah you need some sort of gratification <laughs> exactly so yeah um but yeah uh I've been reading some. I mean, the first two weeks, I feel like that I watched so much TV. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I've I've basically stopped watching TV because I I mean I indulged in Tiger King. I watched a mm-hmm. couple of movies. I finished up some shows that I had just been letting linger. Um, and now I'm kind of I've gotten into a routine that I I enjoy without having too much media involved, which I think has really, really helped me as well. Yeah. So. I, uh, I, I feel the same way. Like this week I've definitely watched, tried not to watch as much TV and like I'm reading more just like for fun. And so that, yeah, that's definitely helped, uh, yeah. <laughs> have, have a little more clear of 
mind. Yeah, absolutely. 